All right, guys, we're going to talk about organizing data. We're going to look at tally tables and frequency tables. So we're going to answer this question, how can we make tables to organize data and solve problems? You're going to be creating your own tables, so we're going to learn how to do that now. First, we need to look at what kind of tables I'm talking about. I am not talking about the kitchen table. Surprise, surprise. First, I'm talking about two different types. This one is called the tally table. A tally table is a table that uses tallies. It's kind of self-explanatory. Look right here. This is a tally table. It uses tally marks to record data in a table. So there are two columns. Each column is named. So this is the name of the dinosaur, and this is the number of tallies. The title of this is Favorite Dinosaur. So we have the names, and then we have the number of tallies for every person who liked that particular dinosaur. A frequency table is a table that uses numbers to record data. So it takes the same information from the tally table and we just put it in a frequency table in number form. So instead of six tallies over here with the an Anatosaurus, yes, difficult, Anatosaurus, we put the number six over here. Seven tallies over here, seven over here. Now that we know what those are, let's get to creating them. Okay, in this question, it says, Miss Swenson's class voted for their favorite pet. They organized the data in this tally table, this one right here. How many more students chose cats than goldfish? Well, this is the tally table that we're given. Here's the title, favorite pet. Here's the column where it lists the pets. And here's the column where it lists the number of people who chose that pet. So what's the first thing we need to do? We need to figure out what it's asking. Well, the question is asking us how many more students chose cats than goldfish. So let's look. Well, first of all, when I look at that, I want to say, hello, that's tallies. And I would have to sit here and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to have to keep counting one by one that's just not practical and it's not as easy as it could be so I'm going to use the tally marks and I'm going to create my own frequency table so let's see I'm going to count the number of rabbits up here in the frequency table there are four tallies for the number of rabbits so down or that was in my tally table down here in the frequency table I'm going to write the number four to show the number of rabbits well, then I'll go back up here, and I'm going to count the number of dogs. Remember, with tallies, guys, you've got to cross your fifth tally over. So we can just skip count. Five, counting on six, seven, eight. How many voted for dogs? There were eight students that voted for dogs. And then we look at cats. That's five, ten, eleven students voted for cats. Eleven. And notice that I'm making my lines, and I've got two columns going on here, the same as the tally chart. Okay, so let's keep going with our goldfish, five and six. Six students voted for goldfishes, goldfishes, goldfish. And finally, hamster, five. Five students voted for hamsters. Well, now that we've created our frequency table, we can look at the information we need. Let's look back at the question. How many more students chose cats than goldfish? So the information I need now is how many children chose cats and how many children chose goldfish. So let's look at cats. Well, 11 people chose cats and 6 people chose the goldfish. I'm going to abbreviate with GF. Now look at your clue word, how many more? How many more means I'm going to do what? I'm going to subtract. So when I subtract, you can either just know 11 minus 6 or you can do the math. Well, can I take 6 away from 1? No, so I'm going to borrow 1 here. That leaves me with 0. And I'm going to give 10 over here. Guys, look, it's the same thing. I can't do that. It's 11 minus 6. 11 minus 6 is 5. So, 
five more students chose cats than goldfish. And you would write five more students. So you see what we did here? We took our frequency, our tally chart, our tally table, and we made a frequency table so that we could see the numbers more clearly, and that gave us our answer. Let's look at a different one. We surveyed the students in Miss Franklin's room asking the question, how do you get home? When you survey people, they give you their answer. And when you've conducted a survey, you create a table to show the results of your survey. So if we asked everybody in Miss Franklin's room, how do you get home? This is what they told us. And we tallied for every student that voted. So students that walk home, they voted and we tallied bike, car, and bus. So what we would do is create a frequency table to answer this question. How many fewer students rode bikes to school than bus and car combined? So let's create our frequency table. The number of walkers, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So let's check it out. Oh, oh, yep, there's our frequency table. There are three people that chose biking six people that chose car riding, and 12 people chose bus. So in total, 30 people voted. Each tally is one student. So now we can look how many fewer, how many fewer, we're going to be subtracting, how many fewer students rode bikes to school than bus and car combined. So first we need to get the number of students that rode bikes. The number of students that rode bikes is three. So I'm going to put three bikes right here. Bus and car combined. Well, that means I've got to add the bus riders and the car riders. So here's bus riders and car riders. I'm going to take 12 and I'm going to add six. That gives me 18. Okay, this is 12 bus riders and this is six car riders and we're combining the bus and the car. Now, now that we've combined them, we have 18, and how many fewer students rode bikes to school than bus and car combined? So we're gonna subtract three. That gives us 15. Now, I like to put things up and down like this instead of side to side. So you can see easily 8 minus 3 is 5, 1 minus 0 is 1, that's still 15. So 15 fewer students ride bikes to school than bus and car combined. So see how much easier it was when we used the frequency table? You've got to create the frequency table from a tally table in order to see your information more clearly. So now let's just simply look at how we draw a tally table or a frequency table. So let's look. Here's some data. If we look at the data Ms. Alvarez collected, we're going to organize the data in a tally chart and a frequency table. Well, we'll do this with any kind of survey that we do. You take the results of your survey and you draw a table with two columns and include a title. So the first thing we need to do is draw a table. Now, I don't like to put a bottom on it yet until I know for sure how long I'm going to need it to be, but first I need a title. You always need a title. So if we're going to use this information, favorite activity. Now, I would write it completely out, but guys, I don't have a lot of room. So once you have your table with two columns. Oh, oh, now I have two columns. See, one, two. Remember, columns go up and down. Rows go side to side or left to right. Now we're going to list each activity in the first column. So first we have to give some more titles. The activities are going here and the number of tallies go here. Then we have sports and reading all the things that are being voted for and watching 
TV. And then you put lines for rows between each one. Then you can count your tallies. Now, if I'm looking at this data, I'm only going to put in, I'm going to make this frequency chart right here, over here, because I'm going to go look at that data right there. So, five people chose playing a sport, four people chose reading, and three chose watching TV. But remember, you have to have the same number of tally marks as you students that voted. So when you do your own surveys, you have to make sure that your tally marks add up to the same number of students that you surveyed or that you asked the questions of. That's how you create one. Use, you don't have to use a ruler, I didn't use a ruler, but make sure your columns and your rows lined up and you have a title for each section. So just to sum it up, let's talk about how a frequency table is helpful. How is a frequency table helpful in solving problems? Well, we've already touched on that. If you're just looking at a tally table, that's a lot of data to look at. That's a lot of numbers, a lot of tallies, and it's just plain more complicated. So take your tally table and create your own frequency table, okay? Take your tally table, create a frequency table so that you can see the actual numbers. Once you do that, then you can use these numbers to create your number sentences to solve your problems. Always create a frequency table from a tally table. Alright, you ready to do some on your own? Let's go!